you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the, world. in the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. This is Voss here from the Chris Voss Show.com. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. When the Iron Lady sings and that makes it official, welcome to the big show. We certainly appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in. As always, the Chris Voss Show is the family that loves you but doesn't judge you, at least not as harshly as your mom does because she liked the other sibling better, and we all know why. So you'll just have to work it out with her and your psychiatrist. <laughs> the great thing is we have lots of psychiatrists and PhDs and, and uh, stuff like that on the show. So just keep listening to the show and maybe we'll be able to fix whatever sort of trauma you've been through or whatever I just invoked in trauma in your life. So that's, that's why we do the show. We hurt you and heal you. It's kind of a weird relationship like that. It's like being married. Anyway, kids, welcome to the big show. As always, we have the most smartest people on the show, the CEOs, the billionaires, the White House presidential advisors, the Pulitzer Prize winners, the authors, all the great minds who bring their stories, lessons of life, their cathartic moments and share them with you so that you can learn to maybe avoid some of them or that you can learn how to improve the quality of your life and all that good stuff because that's really what matters go to goodreads.com for chess chris foss linkedin.com for chess chris foss youtube.com for chess chris foss and chris foss one on the TikTokity, so you can see all the latest stuff the chris foss show is up to in the new year and all that good stuff. As always, we have really cool people on the show. We're excited to have her today. Leia Sacron is on the show with us. She's a multilingual voiceover artist, narrator, and writer. Storytelling is her passion. And she's got her two new books that she has, Gusta and Gusto, that are in audiobook form and coming out in other forms soon to be happening. And her latest update to that, Gusta and Gusto, with commentary that just came out, 12-5-2023. And we're going to be talking about her, about her experience and what she's done in her life. Le Leah has a solid background in music, acting, and dance. She is an author, narrator, and multilingual voiceover artist in English, German, Swiss, and French. She's lived in different places around the globe and learned to adapt to various circumstances and look at situations from different perspectives. This is one of the key aspects of storytelling, as Leia points out. Inspired by her colorful mix of backgrounds and experiences, she's the author and narrator of the aforementioned books and wonderful stories around humor, wisdom, and personal growth, which Spoken Realms in Blackstone Publishing have published. She's a storyteller at heart, and now we have her live on the show. Welcome to the show, Leah. How are you? Hello. Thank you for having me. I love to be here. Thanks for coming. We'd love to have you as well. Give us your dot coms. Where can people find you on the interwebs? It's my name, all written together, Leah Sacron, L-E-A-S-A-K-R-A-N.com. There you go. And is there any other plugs or uh, thank yous or anything like that you want to share out on the show? Well, I'm also on Instagram with my name. I'm on SoundCloud also with my name. Yeah. There That's LinkedIn, of course. <laughs> LinkedIn, always a good place. Lots so, of business always transpires a good place over there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's, the, that's the business version of the, of the social mm -hmm. media sites. Give us a 30,000 overview of your two books now that's been updated with commentary, Gusta and Gusto. Well, their stories are of two rhinos with very humanized emotions. And their 12 chapters actually also talking about life challenges. Also, rhinos have life challenges mm. in a humanized way. But they have this, this different attitude to it because you can look at things from different points of views. And obviously, since they're rhinos with human emotions, they also have very creative approaches to actually deal with challenges and find solutions, also in a very creative way, which can be a great empowerment if we listen or hear these stories. Mm -hmm. And what inspired you to write these uh, characters in the book? The interesting thing was, in the beginning, I actually wanted to make a podcast with these stories. 
And by chance, I heard many years ago, a father, he had to travel abroad and he always told the stories to his daughter. But then when he traveled abroad with his wife, they found a solution that via a podcast, he will tell the stories to his daughter. Mm. And then I thought, oh, wow, that's a lovely idea. I also would like, you know, to anyhow, because I'm a voiceover, I would like to tell stories. But this was actually the inspiration I had. And then I thought, oh, I'm going to write stories about unicorns in form of a podcast. Ah. Yeah. But then my publisher, he said, oh, it would be lovely also as an audio book. Mm -hmm. Then I did the audio book. But there's also, there are two rhinos. And in the end, there's always a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> is is that a theme through the books? Well, in the end, there's always the unicorn. I don't oh. want to give away too much. Oh, okay. We don't the unicorn. Oh. It's always a nice thing to have a unicorn in your life. There Let's you go. Put it that way, yeah. We call that Fridays around here, having unicorns run around. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> but I'm not sure what that's about. Inside, the, tell us a little bit about your journey through life and, and what inspired you. You know, you're, you're really being into storytelling. We, we talk about that a lot on the show, how stories are an important aspect of human nature, human development, human history, and how stories are the owner's manual to life. So tell us your story. My story of life? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I think storytelling, since I'm a little child and also writing, it was, it was so natural for me. It was so obvious to deal with sit situations, to reflect about situations, to write down situations and then fantasize how things could develop. It was, it's so deep within me. It's like, and I also play the piano. So music mm -hmm. and writing was actually always the vehicle to the vehicle to to deal with the situations and uh, then i worked for a long time also as a script writer mm -hmm. and i worked for the theater i directed plays also oh. as an actress and in the opera i also worked and i did a lot of, as a script writer a lot of uh, promotional videos mm -hmm. and then i also did the casting for the voiceovers Mm -hmm. And I think if I think back now, I actually was always also a voiceover. Mm -hmm. I just was not aware of it, that my pathway through life, it, it, it was a journey to realize how important my voice is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I actually also, you know, working as an actress and as a writer and as a voiceover, to, to hear my voice and to, to know it's important that my, vo I can, I can communicate important messages through my voice and that the world hears these messages. So I think it's uh, actually my vocation. Mm -hmm. There you go. And when was the first time you started recognizing the importance of telling stories? Did it happen early on? Did it come from yes. the influence of? Yes, already family? when I, yeah, when I was like, you know, when I could start to write. Okay, when I was six years old, uh -huh. I always played with Barbies and uh -huh. I invented stories. Uh -huh. You know, it's all about storytelling. And then I soon I started writing also, you know, when I could write. I always would write diaries or I always would send postcards to people telling them, you know, I went to the forest and then I saw a rabbit and there was a nice green tree and then I went home and I wish you a lovely day. You know, I, it was always about me seeing things mm -hmm. and writing about them and by writing about what I've seen naturally in a natural way, a story and a situation actually was recognizable, I would say now. There you go. So you're a natural storytelling storyteller from a young age. And, you know, people, it, it's, I, I didn't wake up to this fact till I was 50 that, you know, movies, TV, print, me, you know, different types of media, it's all storytelling. It's all like story just never life. like the light never went on my head, but I've been telling stories all my life and collecting stories. I've been a story collector, griot, if you will. And, uh, and, and I, and I love people like yourself who collect stories and spin them and, and tell them. And, and, uh, you know, this is the, part of it is entertainment. Part of it is 
we learn through that entertainment, human nature, you know, none of us got an owner's manual uh, in the mail. I'm still waiting for mine at 56. But uh, stories are the ways we learn. They're the ways we learn mistakes of others. And we also realize that we're not alone in the world. You know, that there are other people that have the same sort of struggles we do. And maybe they have some ways to resolve it that maybe we're not equipped with yet. And so stories is just such a great way to uh, navigate life. Yeah, and it's also about we can connect through stories, I would oh, say. You, you know, you tell me a story and then I said, oh, right. Mm. I, I also found a similar, you know, a story mm. and then I want to tell it to you. So it's also about connecting, you know, you mm. um, also the slogan kind of a gusta and gusto to take it back. It's connecting generations, connecting mm. hearts and storytelling is also, you know, it's about friendship, mm -hmm. I would there say. You. And building rapport, getting to know another person, yeah. getting to know their journey, and you telling them yours, and, and that's how we go together. There used to be an old thing where when people would meet, or they would be travelers, like in the Old West or something, before that, they would break bread together. And so a traveler would come wow. by and, and say, you know, hey, can I take refuge at, at your place? And the stranger would would they would take them in and they would do what's called breaking bread together which means eating over food it's kind of like what you would see oh anthony bourdain do meeting strangers and getting to know them over food and That's part of so that beautiful. storytelling yes and so that used to be the old tv you'd invite the stranger in your home and he would tell you the tales of the road and places he'd been and bring the world to you and then you'd probably tell them some of your tales of of the road and uh, and that's how we always kind of we're communal as human beings and that now we you know we have tv and all this other things so let's get back to your book gusta and gusto but what's the core message of that can you tell us because i know we can't give a lot away a lot in these books that are novels i think the core message is for the listeners that they feel empowered and you know to to take yourself serious to take situations serious but not too serious. There always needs to be also a certain lightness and not to believe everything you think also, mm -hmm. but kind of to find uh, creative ways how to, how we can, you know, we, we have one situation and we can deal with it in 10 different ways. And Gusta and Gusto, they go through uh, humanized situations but they, obviously it's fantasy, but the fantastic way they actually deal with situations can be a great inspiration also for ourselves, mm -hmm. uh, looking at life and knowing where we want to go to and also to ask the questions, you know, what is my goal and how can I get this in a positive way? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's a thing. Yeah, not everything you think is like probably the best for you. I mean, it's not a lot of stuff, you know. Like I'm usually thinking about pie at any given time, and I'm like, I should get some pie. And then <laughs> my body's like, No, you've had enough pie, so there's, we don't need any more pie. Now, what do you? What are the stories, the books, and audience uh, age group that you're targeting here? It's any age group, I would say. Mm. I mean, obviously, because they're two rhinos, they say it's for kids or for teenager, you know, juvenile fiction. Mm -hmm. But there's all, it's also in the genre humorous stories. Mm -hmm. So it's for any age. There you go. And, and fun is of all ages. Because you got to have fun in life. Now, you, you put out the one book, Gusta and Gusto, and now you've released the Gusta and Gusto with commentary. Tell us the difference and why you released it that way. You know, my, my publisher, he was always also very kind and close, you know, I, and I'm very grateful for Spoken Realms and Blackstone Publishing. And uh, there was the idea, you know, through the stories to connect generations, connect hearts, friendships. And obviously, my daughter is younger than I am. Mm, I would hope so. That's usually <laughs> how it works. I would hope so. She's also an actor. She's not. You should check with the authorities. Or something. I'll check. Yeah, I'll, I'll check her passport. So she's also an actress storyteller and works also in music and voiceover and we we do many things together and she loved these stories and then we thought it's about connecting generations connecting thoughts and you know we don't always have the same opinion but it's not a problem <laughs> <laughs> we still are friends and we find ways oh 
that's interesting how you like it, look at it, mm -hmm. because I think the important aspect is the generation where I was born, for example, and also one of the stories deals with this. Mm -hmm. It's about your job needs to give you security. That's the main thing. Mm -hmm. It's not about having fun. I think we were about the same age. Mm -hmm. So there were different values. And now in the generation of my daughter, I really feel it's a completely different value that you say, I want to do something I really enjoy. You know, it's not anymore that you need to continue the business of your parents in a, in a, it's not anymore the same as it was like 50 years ago, I would say. Mm. And this is also very interesting, actually. If we look at the stories, also one story deals about this, how we actually from generation continue beliefs that we understand we are now in a different time and different ideas and different values and experiences can actually be a great impact talking about life mm -hmm. and stories of life. So mm -hmm. it's very nourishing to look from different perspectives, from different times and value con content upon the stories. There you go. Now, you initially released them on audiobook. Do you plan on bringing them forward to Kindle or a book? I'm actually thinking of it. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Technical aspects are always a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> but I won't be afraid and I will try yeah. to find a way also, you know, to get it on Kindle. It shouldn't mm -hmm. be too difficult, I think, because it shouldn't it's be if you, you yeah. already probably have the text, right? Or it can be yes. transcribed too. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I love this idea. Mm -hmm. And I've thought of it before. I love audiobooks though, and it's available on audible.com, by the way, folks, as well. The uh, I love audiobooks because I, I can listen to them while I'm driving. I consume a lot of audiobooks while I'm driving, because driving's kind of a waste of time. You know, you're just sitting there in the car, but uh, you can sit there and enrich your mind, enrich yourself listening to a great audio book. And, and then, you know, usually it puts you in a good mood, you know, in case you run into bad traffic. So you're just like, oh, I'm enjoying a great audio book right now. So I think that, I think that can make a difference definitely in listening to audio books. Now, do you do, you also do multilingual voice over artist work for other, for other writers? For other, well, I, I have this offer currently on my website that if the audio, if you have an, if you have a book and you would like to transform it into an audio book, obviously, yes, you can contact me. And I'm also happy, you know, to give a free excerpt that you just get a taste also of my, mm -hmm. my voice and of my narration. Yes, of course. And I can I see that on your website. You've got your voice of free audio samples, audio samples. You've got your portfolio of work that are up here. And then, of course, you can do them in different languages. You're quite verbose in different languages, I guess. As, yes, I'm think. actually also thinking to do Gusta and Gusto in German. Ah. And maybe also in Spanish at the moment. There, there are also go. narrators auditioning to do the narration in Spanish because I think that's the great thing actually to have one story in different languages because it's also about, you know, stories there everywhere and there shouldn't be a language barrier. It's about emotions. Mm -hmm. And then you also do help with script writing and trans yes. translation and synchronization. Yes, I do. And dubbing. There you go. Overdubbing. So like when you have to change a swear word to, Bob or something, so it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> you ever seen some of the weird overdubbing they do to block swear words? It's kind of funny. I think some videos on it where it's kind of, especially in the old days when you know yeah. swearing was like a really big deal. They'll, they'll put some, you know, some somebody, you know, say some swear word and they overdub like it's just like what? What, what, what the hell are you doing? And uh, so there you go. Now I, I noticed here on your website for about seven years you gave courses in creative writing. Do you still do that? Currently not, but I thought maybe I could, but you know, I can't do everything. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe online I could, you know, once a month if really people would like it, but I gave creative writing courses for seven years mm -hmm. and the people, you know, they would have loved to continue. But then I said, stop, that's it. <laughs> After seven years, I, you know, 
Okay. But, you know, maybe with a different approach. There's still people who are interested. I, I'll see. But I act, actually, I really focus, you know, on my voiceover work as a voiceover artist. And I also have another project I'm going to write mm-hmm. for soon, but soon, you know, in the near future. Mm-hmm. My publisher is already waiting for more in the genre poems. I don't want to say too much, but mm-hmm. it's going to be, it's going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Drake. It's going to be awesome. There you yeah. go. Awesome so, poems. That would be a nice title. The awesome, awesome poems. There you go. Uh, a yeah. nice little haiku or something. I don't know. What's the future of, is there any books you're working on in the future? Are you going to keep rolling out the Gusta and Gusto series with different scenarios? Actually, my audio producer who did the mastering, he recently said, what about the evil cousin? When is this book going to come out? So I'm going to keep it in mind, maybe. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I could do an evil cousin. The evil Um, rhino cousin? Is it a rhino? Of course. Or maybe it could be be a dragon, you know, the evil. Mm, Dragon, yeah. Dragons are usually not good people. Yeah. Yeah. I think, are there any good dragons? I don't know. I don't know. I, there are I, good dragons. I don't read a lot of dragon books. I'm sure there are good dragons. What was that one show that had the uh, dragon on it with a blonde lady? And uh, it was a m- medieval sort of mixture of fantasy and reality. Yeah. Like yeah. I know. Mm-hmm. Was, mm-hmm. The, was the dragons good in that show or the evil or both? They were kind of like good for her, but bad for anybody she didn't like. That's how it worked out. I saw once a show with a cute dragon. He's oh, a really? Little- very nice dragon, yeah. Well, and he, there was always steam coming out of his nose mm-hmm. because he tried to scare the people. Yeah. Maybe I could write a story like that. That sounds and like no a great one was story. scared of him because he was so cute. That's a that might be a really that great would story. Be a nice story. I don't know if I saw this or if I just yeah. invented it now. Maybe maybe I, so like the steam comes out of his nose because he's afraid of people as much as people are afraid of him. We should and write that story. He has to learn to somewhere, you know, some it is so it's gotta be some young kid who crosses the boundary and some young kid goes, He's not he's not evil, he's he's a nice dragon. I'm gonna go pet him. And you know, thereby, you know, they're they're best friends now. And everyone's like, Hey, hey, how the hell did you work that out? That sounds like a story, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And often also I think with our thoughts, we build up a huge thing. Ah. But, you know, just approach it and you, you could, know you could talk about prejudices, like, you know, how people have racial prejudice or they see people what? and make they jump to conclusions about who people are and and it's an example or an allegory or whatever. I flunked second grade. Where basically, you know, don't have prejudices and get to know people. And you know, it's, it turns out it's not a really a mean dragon at all. It's great that you're saying this. Also, yeah. within the stories of Gusto and Gusto, there is really, uh, there is also the story where you <laughs> refer to all the countries that no matter in which country you are, it's all about human beings who just want to be respected and to be heard and seen. It's always, no matter where we are, it's always the same theme. Yeah. Everybody wants to be respected yeah. or at least have courtesy and 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 be treated like a, a fellow human being with the dignity that's always important so yeah there's there's probably a whole you know, probably wrote a whole story just send me your residual check and we'll be fine i'll let you write it uh okay. i mean i don't have that kind of imagination to do novels all i all i'm i'm a business guy all i can do is business books i wish i had that trick but you folks who can write novels are just magical and how you can story weave and build characters and i don't have any of that talent so i'm gonna let i'm gonna let you uh, hold Aww, on <laughs> but you just gave me a great idea so well, maybe, run with it i'll be i'd be right, let's put, in the, let's put in the dedication thanks chris voss, for yes. a great idea i really appreciate <laughs> idea it idea from you. chris voss subscribe to chris voss show he's yeah. uh, he's got the good ideas that's what they pay me for i'm just an idea guy final thoughts and uh, on the book as we go out is there anything we didn't touch on about the book that you want people to know about I would like that people know, and that's also one of the slogans of Gusta and Gusto, that what you can, you, what you imagine, you can create. Mm. I strongly believe this. Mm-hmm. And that you believe that beliefs actually can move things into a direction you want to. It's mm. all about energy. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Energy and, and belief and storytelling, et cetera, et cetera. What's some of your advice for people who want to write like you do, who want to maybe write stories like this? Hopefully they don't steal the dragon idea now that's I hope so. <laughs> better, better write this story quick and get it out. Yeah, yeah, I'll get uh, 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 off the show. <laughs> I want residuals from everybody, at least that will be in the dedication. Absolutely. Um, the uh, for everybody who writes that damn story. But uh, what 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 is your writing method do you use? How do you do you sit down every day and write? What sort of process do you use when you write? Actually, the stories they just come to me. Wow. I can't say it's so it's I, I'm 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 just actually listening what comes, you know, mm -hmm. it was with the rhinos. They were just here. And then I just wrote the story and what I'm actually I, it's it's here. Everything is here already. It's like if you paint, you know, a, a painting, you see it in your at some point it's ready and then you just paint it. And I have the comparison with music. You know, I studied for a long time. I was at the conservatory in San Francisco with music. Hmm. Yeah, before I went into acting. But anyway, it's a different story. But um, before playing, I was also playing for competitions. I would, I would just look at the the sheet, at the notes, mm -hmm. and I would just let it settle. I wouldn't even play for a long time. I would just go through it always in my imagination, in my ear. I mm. felt the movements in the fingers, but without moving. And then at some point, I knew now I'm ready. Mm -hmm. And then I started playing it. And it was, I was already very far, just through my, ima through the imagination of playing the, music piece wow and you know you do also do this in sports for example that you go through the pathway for example runners mm -hmm. and you do it with your imagination yeah and it, it's it so gives, interesting how you guys can build that out in your heads how it just uh, comes to you it's it's a practice mm -hmm. is that is that what you find is the important part the practice the building of that muscle in telling stories I think it's important to to believe that you can do it because we have, you know, self doubts. They can be very strong. Mm -hmm. And someone once said, "The greatest enemy you have is yourself or yeah. your thoughts." And to discipline your own thoughts into the direction you want to go, mm -hmm. and that it's positive. And I recently made a really interest. I had a very interesting experience. I read in a book, it was about, thank you for believing in me before I believed in myself. Oh, wow. And I actually misunderstood it, this quote, because mm -hmm. I didn't read everything. And I thought, wow, that's really a marvelous quote, because this means, thanks for believing in me before I believed in myself, that somewhere in your own DNA, there is already the belief you have for yourself. Oh. like like a grain before it blossoms but they said the mentor a mentor actually believes in you before you believed in yourself but my misunderstanding i really liked the way i misunderstood it <laughs> sometimes <laughs> that story is better <laughs> yeah it's great isn't it and so that's why what you imagine you can create there I think all information is in the universe and you can touch upon it if you give yourself the permission to create your own great life and mm -hmm. educate yourself and say, if there are thoughts which harm you, you know, just throw them out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't want to keep the bad thoughts. No, you don't want to. That's what the judge tells me I can't do anymore. <laughs> With that voice in my head that says kill, kill, kill all the time. I get one of the ankle bracelets uh, off this week. There's a stack of them. And the judge says, no more bad thoughts. But no, I remember, I think it was Stephen Wright, the famous comedian who always did that smug comedy. He, uh, one of his jokes was, I was sitting, I was sitting uh, watching a football game with my 100 year old grandfather, and there was a replay of a touchdown. And he he thought it was real that they gotten another touchdown 
and I was going to tell him that he was mistaken, and then I realized the game in his head was probably better. <laughs> <laughs> And it's always stuck with me. I'm like, that's an interesting perspective. It's the way, you know, like your interpretation of, of what someone was uh, telling you, you know, and you your your story turned out better. Good for you. I mean, that's that's the beauty of creativity. You take something Absolutely. That everyone knows, you make it better, and then and then there you are. There's there's the fun of that. When you go through your work, what why do you love uh, doing audiobooks and voiceovers as opposed to writing in prose? Or do you is there a preference? I think voicing a text, it mm -hmm. actually, I mean, obviously, if you write it, at some point, you know, mm -hmm. there's a spark of life. Mm -hmm. But through your voice, you actually additionally put a light on it. Mm -hmm. And it can sparkle. Because, you know, you voice what you what you wrote. Mm -hmm. It's like a marriage, I would say, a positive marriage. <laughs> Seen those movies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's so, there's just some magic happening. And also, you know, if I voice the text which I wrote or, you know, some text mm -hmm. of other people, I feel is there the flow? Is there maybe a word I need to change that there's a better flow? What is how do I give the sense of of the meaning, what I would like to that people feel? And it's actually I'm I'm taking the listeners. I'm not saying by their ear, <laughs> by the hand. And uh, we do this journey together. Mm -hmm. If you, it's a different approach. If you read a book and you read it on your own, you hear maybe your own voice or you project maybe a voice of a narrator you like. Mm -hmm. But if you actually say, okay, I want uh, the nar narration of Leo Sakran, mm -hmm. you actually say, I'm trusting this story and I'm trusting to be taken by the hand and doing this journey and going this journey and enjoying this journey with now the narrator. I enjoy because I enjoy the voice. I enjoy the pauses. I enjoy the rhythm. I, I can emphasize with the way she tells the stories. Mm -hmm. That's why you also, you know, many people, they, they stick with certain narrators because they just can identify with them or they just, it gives them something where they really feel nourished and, you know, at ease and comfortable. There you go. There you go. As we go out on the show, give people a pitch out in your final thoughts on the book. Tell them where to buy it. Give them a pitch out to pick up the book wherever fine books are sold. Well, you can find it everywhere. You can find it on Audible. Mm -hmm. You can find, yeah, on Amazon, you can find it everywhere. Mm -hmm. There you go. And uh, I, th I know you, you said to me in the green room, you wanted to thank your publisher and all that stuff. Do you want to throw that in there? Yes. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah. So I really want to thank uh, Spoken Realms. I want to thank Blackstone Publishing, mm -hmm. Stephen Cohen from Spoken Realms very much, and the whole team of Spoken Realms. I want to thank uh, Morrison Ellis. Mm -hmm. who is one of the best audio producers, I would say, mm -hmm. um, for mastering everything, for also the great talks we had. Mm -hmm. I want to thank uh, Jason Von Winkler, the illustrator of the covers and the valuable discussions we had where I could actually tell him what kind of emotions I wanted him to illustrate with Gusta and Gusto and which he really did in a perfect way mm -hmm. and I want to thank my daughter mm -hmm. Laura Dana Rose Sakran mm -hmm. it was so inspiring to do in the commentaries the stories with her it gave this freshness and always kind of in a good provocative way an inspiration how we can hear elements of stories in a different way and it was a lovely work mm -hmm. that we did together and i think also the value of relationships between parents and children i think 
this is just such an important aspect of life also to Definitely. have the courage to connect and make beautiful things together. And she also performed in a lovely way, the bear, where mm. she had the voiceover. So if you hear the bear, he's called Ludwig Bear Mountain. Remember, this is my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, it's been fun, Leia, to have you on the show. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank it's you. Fun. And give us your dot com one more time as we go out. And I think we're going to have some giveaways on the Chris Voss Show post. Yes, People can absolutely. look for the codes for that. So look on the Chris Voss Show dot com post and you can see the codes and different things that are offering there. Okay, it's once more leasacram dot com mm -hmm. in one word. Mm -hmm. Shall I spell it one more time? Or sure, please do. Okay, so it is L E A S, like Sandra, mm -hmm. A K. R, like Rome, A, N, like news. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. There you right. go. So thank you very much, Leah. Thanks, for us for tuning in. Go to goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Foss, LinkedIn.com, Fortress Chris Foss. Chris Foss, one of the TikTokity and all those crazy places on the internet. Be good to each other. Stay safe. And we'll see you guys next time. Thank you. And that should